your personality can actually rebuild you as the new man, and you are going to be rebuilt as the new global citizen. This is what's going to happen to you if you go out into the street and try and object to this plan when you see what it really is. So I think this is really a very serious moment that we're in. It's been a long process, uh, and you see it, you know, exactly what you're seeing right now. It's a plan to disrupt and destroy the existing system. It's a plan of transformation and control, and that's what we're living through right now. Is the action plan, it's the blueprint, the comprehensive plan to inventory and control all land, water, plants, minerals, construction, means of production, food, energy, everything on the planet, law enforcement, education, and of course, information and human beings. So this is you know, a comprehensive plan of action, an inventory and control plan. It's about data sharing, it's about money transferring from the developed nations to the lesser developed nations. And ultimately, it's about destroying your ability to have a voice, destroying your ability to have representative government. It's about changing your government to governance and taking away your voice, you know, entirely destroying your ability to be free and to be independent. And the goal, of course, is to transfer power from local individuals to a global governance system. So you can't do that all at once, and it's been a long process. And this is about destroying your ability to, uh, to actually be able to control what it is that happens to you. It's a global plan that they implement it locally, so it looks like a local plan. It's always called different things, no matter where you live. So that's another way of being a stealth plan, you see. And it's right there in your town. It's a regional plan, and it's right there where you live right now. Global crisis requires a global response, and that justifies global governance. It's designed to panic people. It's designed to engage you in a, in a really visceral way. The other thing that happens when they reveal their plans quite, you know, the plans are always uh, right out there. You know, they've always been right out there. Uh, there's no question about it. They've been refining it with the ability with, uh, that they're getting with technology. And I think that is really where we're at now, is that they're less concerned about us. They're less concerned about our objection. And that is what concerns me, is that the less concerned they are, it's, it's sort of a message to us that we're not really concerned to them. So therefore, you know, it makes me think, you know, maybe we're at that point where there's not much we can do. So I think really there is still a lot that we can do. And what is happening now is that the technology has caught up to the plans of these people. They've always had these same plans. And I will say that as far as technology goes, what has man always wanted? Man has always wanted two main things, to live forever and to create life. And we are very close to these things. I don't know about forever, but we're close to major life extension and the creation of life. All you have to do is go to uh, Cornell University's plan. Uh, they've got a, a, a video out right now. It's engineers create three major traits of life. Go and take a look at that. They are actually creating life. So, and there is no ethical stop on these people. And that is a major concern that there is literally nothing that holds these people back. So when they have the technological ability, they're talking about total digital connectivity. They're talking about a new social contract. Well, you know, I don't know about you, but a contract generally means that both parties have, you know, something to say about it. But this is a contract where, you know, none of us have anything to say. And I think we're getting to see what it looks like when you go out in the street. This is one reason why you're seeing this kind of hysteria in the street, because it's a lesson, a notification to us. This is what's going to happen to you if you go out into the street and try and object to this plan when you see what it really is. It's real. This is a real situation that we're in. It, it uses whatever means necessary. And so the plan is really to, you know, this term disrupt that everyone's seeing now is, is really the plan is to destroy the social, the social fabric. It's quite successful as you're seeing it right now. And yes, the United States is a huge economic force and a huge force and beacon to the world for individual rights and freedom and liberty. 
which is under attack, definitely. And it is a target. There is no question about that. And that is not a positive thing for the, uh, for the Union of the United States. It's about breaking down the individual. It's about breaking down your alliance to any old system, any old connection, your family, your old thoughts, the, your belief system. It literally makes you into a patient. This is a mental health technique that's used to break down your personality and actually rebuild you as the new man. And you are going to be rebuilt as the new global citizen. So, uh, you know, this is a way to break down society. It's a way to break down mental health. So this is, you know, the design of the system right now. It's already doing that. You know, this is the way it's set up, is that whether you're worth it or not is, you know, going to be determined through your, you know, your credit score. And then all of this is, you know, technologically possible now. So this is the design of the plan. Your buildings are very important to this plan. Smart cities, the strong cities networks, all of this, that is the design of this plan, is literally to take your freedom completely away from you. And I'm not talking about some plan that's way out there in the, you know, in the future. I am talking about this is happening right now. You are using too much energy, too much water, and too much land. And you need to be isolated and moved into the high-density city center where you can be more easily controlled and managed and surveilled. And that is what this is doing to you right now. So, you know, it's not like this planet out there in 2030 or 2050. 2020 is a really important year. A lot of these plans, when you look at your regional plan for your area, a lot of these plans are named your town, whatever the name is, 2020 because 2020 is a key year in the implementation of this plan. I think it's really important that people understand that we're being conditioned to be passive right now. We're being conditioned to click a light and think that that means that we're a political activist. You don't even know where your city council meets. You think it doesn't matter. But those are the people who make the rules that you live under right there in your town. And you better believe that it does matter. And don't tell me that your that your government is so bad that you know that you can't do anything about it. It sure looks like that. But the thing is, is that you'd let it get that way. And if you continue to let it get that way, it ain't going to get better. So what you need to do is actually occupy your government to take a term that you know I think was really misused to actually go and be a part, be your government, be your government. You know, we're in the end game here. There's not a lot of time left, so, you know, you should have been doing this a while ago. They don't want you to make trouble. have to bring out the cops. So they're really wanting to, you know, keep you in your seat and keep you at home quiet. So that's what you don't want to be, is the person who sits at home. So you want to take this on. You want to spread this information. You can do it with flyers. You can do it with mailers. You can share them with people. You can share these videos with people and then decide what kind of action you're going to take. Because just knowing without doing something about it is simply not enough at this time. And more willing to not be a first adopter of many of their stuff. You're going to see virtual reality. That's going to replace your reality. It's going to be so much better. You're going to be able to eat virtually, uh, do some pretty fun stuff, if you get my meaning, virtually. And everybody's going to want to do it. And you're going to want this stuff. They are making it so that you want it. So you're going to ask for it. You have to resist that. Resist it in yourself. Plus, take a look at yourself. What do you do for a living? Are you a change agent? Are you an organizational manager? Are you working for the city or, or the state or the feds or the county? What are you doing? Are you part of this plan? Are you a planner? Are you part of this plan? Are you a university professor? Don't be like Brett Weinstein who's up there in, in Evergreen College, and, you know, all of a sudden he's like, oh, no, they're attacking me. It's like, yeah, dude, what, what have you been doing, doing all these years? years? You've been teaching them this stuff. If you are participating in this plan, withdraw your support. Withdraw your financial support, your political support, and your social support. Have some guts, because that's what it takes. People aren't going to like you, but you need to do it. Wherever you work, wherever you are, you need to talk about this. If you're in a government meeting, if you're in a if you're a manager at some supermarket, you want to talk about this in your management meeting. You talk about this everywhere. Tell people about this plan. It is a real, actual thing that is right there in your city, right now on the shelf, being active right now on you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
when your day is too post-worthy. So it's a real plan. It's really there in your town. So you know what? Let's participate together. Let's fight this together. We can do it. We have had some successes. But you know what? We need more. We have to fight this together, all of us, and resist.